Hi, guys. Can you hear me? America runs on Boulevard time. All right. That, my friends, was the first TV ad ever aired. Say, I know. It's so engaging. It's like, it's, it actually, what it actually sounds like is, you know when a radio DJ is about to introduce a song on the radio? It's 835 a.m., and that time is brought to you by Bulova, because America runs on Bulova time. But, you know, thankfully, the advertising industry on TV has really evolved a lot in, in, in the last many, many years. This was in 1941, so it's really been 70 years. Now, I think the mistake that a lot of advertisers do is that they think that whenever a new media comes along, like TV, they think that the rules of the existing media, which at the time was radio, can be directly applied to whatever is new. But I think what's happened in the last 70 years is that now TV ads have become standardized to 30 seconds. And thankfully, advertisers have gotten a lot better at actually, uh, at actually telling a story within a 30-second time frame. Who of you here remember this ad? This McDonald's ad, everyone knows. Who cried during this ad? Better than I'm, sure, I'm sure some of you cried over this ad, right? So, so this, is, this is now what a 30-second ad looks like today. But then around five or 10 years ago, this new medium came along, and it was digital video in the form of YouTube. And suddenly it changed the rules all over again. Because here comes this new platform where you have an unlimited canvas. It's not 30 seconds, it's not 15 seconds anymore. You have a medium that's more personal. So it's not consumed on a big screen, it's consumed on a tablet or in a laptop or on your mobile phone. It put the power of creation in users' hands. So it wasn't the TV networks anymore that had a monopoly in terms of creativity. The normal person can essentially become a star by creating their own YouTube content. And lastly, as the technology evolved, it also created a lot more opportunities to interact. And so when this monster called digital video media came along, advertisers were like, what do we do with this? So the question now becomes, how do we move on from the traditional way of storytelling into what I would call the new rules of storytelling? And as with any process of moving on, whether it's media or in real life, as we all know, and I'm sure you can all agree, the hardest part of moving on is forgetting, <laughs> right? So uh, what I'm going to tell you today, as I tell you the rules of storytelling, I'm going to tell you four things you need to forget if you want to be successful in the digital uh, advertising industry. So the first thing you need to forget, oopsies, is forget your time limit. So like we said, you're not stuck to a 30s or 15 seconder anymore. And the good news is a lot of advertisers have started to understand this. Let me, okay have started to understand this. And now the standard for long-form content is usually about two to three minutes long. I'm sure all of you recognize this one. This one is from Jollibee. It's the Valentine's Day series. And it was a series of three videos that were each about two to three minutes long. And that's really become the standard in the industry as far as advertising. So who cried watching this? I'm sure many of you. Thank you. I see raised hands. You're not liars. That's fantastic. Thank you. You have emotions. Cry. So, but what if, what if the story I want to tell, it's not two to three minutes. What if the story I want to tell, oops, sorry. What if the story I want to tell, oopsies, sorry, not going back. Can we go back a slide? There you go. There you go. What if the story I want to tell is six hours long? Six hours. So this is exactly what Virgin Airlines did. What they wanted to do was to simulate what it was like to be in a, in a cheap budget airline where there's no in-flight entertainment, the food is crappy, the service is crappy, and so it's like the most treacherous, most horrible six hours of your life. And to give you a preview of what went into, into those six hours of video, here is what they showed. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Peanuts. You gonna eat those peanuts? You know what? I cannot get enough hairspray. I am going to Paris to study pigeons for a year. Oh. Welcome to Blah Airlines. There you go. That's Blah Airlines from, from, Virgin Air, from Virgin Airlines. Six hours of video. Now, what if we, so that's one extreme. Now, what if we went the other extreme and my story was not six hours long, but only six seconds long? And that's what the movie, that's what the movie Sing did. 
I'm sure some of you got to see the movie Sing, but what they did was, before they launched the actual trailer, what they did was that they launched uh, five six-second trailers, which were essentially parang leaked auditions of some of the characters in the story. And I have to tell you, it was super cute. Favorite one. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, give my butterfly sugar, baby. And one last. Like the wind. Hey. For the 80s kids out there. Right. So that's the first rule. Forget your time limit. Whether you're six hours or six seconds long, be adventurous with how you want to do your advertising. The second rule is forget one to many. Now, We've now gone from broadcasting with TV, which assumes that there's maybe a family watching from behind a TV screen, to now what's called person casting. It assumes that because you're watching on a tablet or a mobile phone or a, or a laptop, there's only one person behind the screen, and presumably you can talk to this person in a very direct way, which is exactly, oopsies, which is exactly what Oishi did. So, yeah, which is exactly what Iwishi did uh, for, for their skippable series. Now, who here loves the skip ad button on YouTube, right? Yeah. Everyone raised their hands. Of course, we, we love the skip ad button on YouTube, right? And what Iwishi did was that they made the skip ad button part of the whole joke. So here's what they did uh, when they advertised their, their chips. The more, the more he tells you to skip the ad, the more you don't want to skip it. It's like, I kind of want to see him drown. <laughs> right. And th the other ironic thing is be uh, because of because how, how to execute it. You know, on average, about 2 in 10 people would watch an ad all the way through. But for this ad, it was actually an average of 5 out of 10 people. So mo more than 2 times more people watch this ad, even if he was telling you to actually skip it. Right? And the other, you know, and, and if we take that self-awareness to a higher level, we get to what Burger King did. So Burger King approached the YouTube team and asked, what are the top viral videos right now? And what they did was they took all those videos and created 64 different ads to go in front of these videos. So here's what they did. <laughs> Band. I hate these things. This guy's just trying to watch a graphic animal attack video, but no, I have to sit through an ad. Ugh, stupid, incredible deal. This guy's just trying to watch a screaming goat video, all black highlights, watch a music video, Jimmy Fallon clip, an Anchorman 2 trailer, North Korean babies play the guitar, but no, they have to sit through an ad. There you go, that was Burger King. So, that's the second thing to forget. Forget one-to-many, forget broadcasting. Think person casting or one-to-one. -one. The third thing you need to forget is forget high production. Now, this... Hi, everyone. Welcome, Welcome back to Kids Place Channel. Today, we are going to open... Open... This. Um... um Okay, can anyone guess? Sorry, can we can we pause it for a bit? Can anyone guess what that video before? So that video before was from the channel called Kids Toys, right? And it's a family in Laguna with two kids, and all they're doing on their channel is just opening toys and playing with them, right? And who can guess how many views this has? Who says this has one million views? One million? Yeah, ten million? Twenty? Fifty million? Who says fifty million? 
who says 100 million. 100 million. All right, you're all wrong. It has 300 million views. This video of them opening toys has 300 million views. And they were getting so many views from all over the world that even ABS-CBN took notes. They're like, how is it that we're investing so much on artistas and on super high production? And this is just a family with non-professionals just opening toys in their living room. And, and they're getting 300 million views. And this family, by the way, earns $30,000 a week from all the advertising they get on their videos. So if you want to make money, open a YouTube channel. That's the lesson. But the good news also here for advertisers is that it means they don't have to spend for big artistas or big production in order to have great advertising. And so that's exactly what Tic Tac did. So Tic Tac uh, worked with a magician named Zach King. Oh, I can't do it. There you go. This is uh, an example of a Zach King video. There you go. Uh, he does these very quick magic tricks, which he posts on Instagram, on Vine, and on YouTube. <laughs> I no! No! Yeah. Really cool, right? So what Tic Tac did was like, okay, we know th this is what you're good at. So here's a packet of Tic Tac, and do your thing with it. And this is what they produced. Really cool stuff from Tic Tac. Now, the other, the other uh, end of the spectrum when it comes to uh, you know, going low production is the fact that you can actually let the other people do the work for you. And that's exactly what Coke did uh, for their AH campaign. They asked people, how would you describe the first sip of Coke and send it to us in a video form? And when they got all the entries, all the creative director had to do was, was like edit them together on his Mac, and they came up with this ad. Right. That's the third thing you need to forget. Forget high production. Let other people do the work for you. And last one is forget storytelling. And that means that instead of just telling people your story, you need to make them part of the story. And technology has a big part in this. This is an example from... There we go. Sorry. Here's an example from Volvo. So they had a car called the XC90, which was not going to be in showrooms for another six months. But what they wanted to do was be able to let people test drive the car even without the car being there. So what they did, what they did here was that they shot a 360 render of the interiors of the car and also a 360 render of the Swedish rainforests and simulated what it would be like to do a test drive. And all they had as tools were Google Cardboard, which is like the VR tool, and the mobile phone. And they came up with an experience like this, right? Now, just because we're talking about digital media doesn't, doesn't mean that TV can't be part of the party anymore. And that's what Coke did for their campaign in Hong Kong. So this is the chalk campaign from Hong Kong, which involved a mobile app where people would actually wait for the ad to come on at 10 PM and use, and use the app to interact with the TVC. So here's what they did in Hong Kong for Coke. Well, hello, is this thing on? Is anybody listening? In Hong Kong, Coca-Cola was launching a regional TVC. And our task was to stay true to the film whilst getting every team in town to see it and buzz about it. How could we get this one spot to excite them on a whole new level? Like this. Meaning rapid motion is the latest slang word used by Hong Kong teens. We created an iPhone app where teens could catch the tumbling bottle caps from the TVC to win instant prizes. Step 1. Download the app. Step 2. Wait for the TVC to air at 10pm each night. Step 3. Chop or swing your phone to catch instant prizes straight from the screen. 
talk, 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 talk. Every chop could instantly win you discounts, mobile games, and other exclusive virtual collectibles. We turned an otherwise traditional TV ad into Hong Kong's and Coca-Cola's first ever interactive TV gaming promotion. And we also ran the ads in cinemas and outdoor. Then what? Right. And so, and the other aspect of letting people into the story is actually letting them know the secret, right? And that's why prank advertising was such a big thing uh, in the last couple of years, because it's it's because you, as a viewer, know something that the people in the video don't know. And my favorite piece of prank advertising has to have come from LG when they launched their ultra reality TV. Here's what they did. Adelante. Permiso, don César. ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo le va? ¿Cómo está? ¿Me permite esos documentos, por favor? Sí, aquí. El currículum. Bien. Ingeniero comercial. Así es. Perfecto. ¿Licencia conducir la tiene al día? Sí, al día. Ya, perfecto. ¿Usted está más o menos claro cuáles son los propósitos de nuestra empresa? Bueno, principalmente... ¿Tuvo algún problema llegar acá ahora? No. Porque estamos un poquito... A, a mi... A mi... Madre. Perfecto. Aquí están las... Cuidado. ¿Eh? Ah, sí, perfecto. Mire, mire, mire. He was not a fan of that prank. <laughs> so, in summary, here are the four things you need to forget. First, forget your time limit. Forget one too many. Forget high production. And the last is forget storytelling. But if there's one more thing you can afford to forget, honestly, okay, ah, you can forget everything I just told you today. Because the reality is, the one thing that you should never forget is, that the, uh, is the core of what a good story is. And what a good story is, is a basic human truth that is told with sincerity of intention. Thank you.